a moment where it feels like the market might be rolling over, at least taking a serious breather after a magnificent run, let me tell you about a stock that's actually managed to rally during this downdraft over the past couple of days. I'm talking about R.R. Donnelly & Sons, R.R.D., the world's number one commercial printing company, with a packaging and labeling business, a logistics division we've got to talk more about, as well as a growing digital segment. And, of course, R.R. Donnelly is also the single most trusted firm when it comes to preparing financial statements for businesses. Now, for ages, this company seemed like it might be in secular decline, and the stock languished. But lately, R.R. Donnelly has been on fire, delivering three straight better-than-expected quarters, with a stock that's now just barely more than a dime away from its 52-week high. Oh, and it supports a terrific 5.3% yield. When R.R. Donnelly reported last week, the company posted a $0.09 earnings beat off a 42 cent basis, gave strong guidance for 2015. This is the most powerful company in a fragmented industry. And while that industry might be shrinking, R.R. Donnelly has the flexibility to make tons of smart acquisitions that can bolster its growth. And it's got a stock that's up nearly 28% since we last spoke to the CEO just since mid-December. Remember, smidge from the 52-week high. So let's check in with Tom Quinlan, the president and CEO of R.R. Donnelly & Sons, hear more about the quarter and where his company said it. Mr. Quinlan, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Thank Thank you. Have a seat. All right. We've got the full display. I typically like to ask you about the more more arcane. I know we've got to talk about self-published books. You know, we've got to talk about labeling. But I got some catalogs in the mail, including from Wayfair, Justin Meme, which has had a blowout quarter, the Restoration Hardware. I'm looking at Urban Outfitters, which is anthropology, doing a lot of of different catalogs. I went to see the JCPenney management, and they're saying, listen, you know what? For heaven's sakes, we're so glad we have a catalog. Any chance... Any chance that catalogs can make a recovery? Yeah, I would, I would tell you, Jim, that they, they haven't gone away. The, okay, the catalog right. is uh, something that has, gets you to that electronic device. It, it's not a world that's going to be just digital. Mm-hmm. It's going to be digital and print, print and digital. Uh, when you think about all the ways now that we get communicated to, that we can be reached out to, right. some people prefer a tablet, some people prefer their iPhone, some people prefer the physical content. Our job as an integrated global communication service supplier is to go ahead and make sure that we have a connected experience for our customers. And in your conference calls, it's very clear that you are, when people come, when companies, bricks and mortar companies say omni-channel, they're turning to you for the soup to nuts omni-channel. Yes, we built a platform that really goes ahead and allows us to serve our customers that way. We know that our customers got to have a situation to where they can go ahead and reach out to you whenever you want to be reached out to. It's got to be the right message at the right time in a cost-efficient manner that has an action take place. If the action doesn't take place, then it, nothing really nothing really comes out of it. And that's where we think we add a lot of value. Um, speaking of actions taking place, man, another acquisition. Uh, acquisition, by the way, snapped up before another company did. That's a pretty aggressive act, Tom. I mean, what's going on? I mean, this is an acquisition that, that was a, for what, you know, a sleepy publishing company that may not be so sleepy that you decided you had to have. Yeah, I think, I think when the S4 comes out, there'll be a, more of a story there. But okay. I would tell you, Courier has just, you know, unbelievable customer base that they've served so well over the years. They've got modern equipment. They've got a talented workforce. And as we think about the capabilities that we have to add to our business for our customers on the digital front, it's a perfect fit with our strategy. Can, is this the company that you use if you don't have a formal publisher and you're a writer? Uh, they have that ability to do right. that. So, I mean, that is something that, uh, you know, as you think about, all of us now are authors. Right. Uh, so they can play in that role as well. And another form of book that we tend not to want on our tablet, uh, religious books. Yes. And they own that market, right? They do. They, uh, that's why I say when they say they have a great customer base for years, yeah. uh, that's what we're, we're very excited about, the possibility of having them come on board. I love the company as it is, but people who are very so smarter than me are saying, you know what, maybe they should consider spinning off this incredibly fast-growing logistical, logistics business. Make sense or keep it under the same roof? Well, I would tell you, what we did in, at the end of 2013 was we broke the business into four segments, right. publishing retail services, strategic services, variable print, and international. We know analysts and we know shareholders don't have a lot of time to spend, to look, to try to figure mm-hmm. out where the hidden jewels are. Uh, our strategic services uh, you know, do have great financial, logistics. Logistics business was something probably seven years ago. I think the team, uh, we went ahead and said, look, mm-hmm. we need to have an infrastructure to deliver our printed product. Right. And that has grown into products and services and capabilities that not only deliver print, but we can deliver washer machines. We can go ahead. We don't have drones. Right. Uh, but we can go ahead and... and no, uh, I mean, that's why you go to the full service. And you also basis. make print Mad Money calendars or Jim Craver. I like the individual printing that you can do for companies for premiums. One, one last question. 
uh, your capital allocation. You're making money now. And if you bought quad, which is what I'd like, but I know you can't, other than a big quad acquisition, which is really the last competitor, um, dividends are already so big, but it can grow after you pay down more debt? Yeah, we've been throwing off 400 to $500 million of of free cash, cash flow. Uh, as you've seen, I think in the 10 years, 11 years we've been together, it's about $14 billion of cash we've deployed through acquisitions, dividend, right. interest payment, internal CapEx. Uh, so we're excited about it. Even though stock still hasn't really moved in five years, which seems why it's such a bargain to me. We, we agree. All right, terrific. That's Tom Clinton, president and CEO of R. Dominic. says those who want income and growth, this is it. And don't buy an oil stock with income and growth because they may not have the income. This company does. Dick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.